Welcome everyone, this is Swati from Edureka and in today's session we'll learn how to install ReactJS on our systems. As you know, there are many different ways in which we can install ReactJS on your systems. But today I'll be showing you the two major ones. The first will be installation by downloading the dependencies via NPM and then we'll see how to install by embedding the dependencies. Both of the processes will be followed by the respective programs. So let's get started with our first method that is installation by downloading via NPM. So in order to install by downloading the dependencies you need to follow some steps. Let's see what are they. So the first step is download and install NPM. So if you guys are not familiar with NPM then let me tell you that NPM is a package manager for JavaScript programming language and you must have it on your systems. So let me show you from where you can download it. Okay, so here you can see that we have one site, it's called node.js.org slash en slash download. From this site, you can see that we have different kind of uh, files for different configuration. Now, according to your system configuration, you can choose your file. So, as for me, I'm using a 64-bit Windows. So, for me, I have to download this file. Once you have downloaded, you need to open it and install it. Just click on run and go through the installation. I have already installed it in my system so let me just follow the next step quickly okay so next is open CMD and go to the folder so here it is saying to go to your project folder so now let me go back to my project folder so this is my project folder inside uh, E drive I have react.js as my project folder so what I'll do I'll uh, open the CMD and inside I'll change my directory to E and then go to react.js okay now as you can see I am inside my project folder so now you need to set up the npm environment so just type and see whether npm is working or not okay so now here you can see that my npm is working if you get this kind of message that this means that your npm is properly configured and is good to go in case you don't get this kind of message you need to configure it again so now let's move on to our next step what is our next step okay so our next step is using npm start installation so I need my command prompt and uh, first I need to tell it that uh, npm in it now this npm in it will create one package.json file as you can see I have my package.json file over here now it is asking me whether my name is react.js or not so here everything should be in lowercase so just give it a name as react.js you can give it anything then version you need not to fill all the details it's asking for just give the necessary ones as for the name is the mandatory and then we have the author one so for author I'll say Edureka and I'll proceed okay so this is fine with me all the description I want all the details like this so I'll say yes and then I'll proceed with the installation next step we have is install webpack using npm so now we need to install the webpacks for that we'll say npm install webpack okay so here we are using save dev because we want it as a developer version not the production version so just hit enter and it will start installing the webpack now this webpack is responsible for combining all the dynamic components in our code it will help in importing the data from different code files so let it get installed so it's done installing the webpack now next we have to install the react so we'll say npm install react along with react dom and save okay so it's done with the react installation as well now we'll move on and install the babel for this so we'll say npm install
Okay, so here we go. Let it get installed. Okay, so here we are done with all our uh, modules. So now we are good to go with our coding. So let's move ahead and see how our programs are created. So now to create our program, we will be creating three files. One will be webpack.config.js, one will be HTML file and last one is the JSX file. Now this webpack.config.js is a configuration file which will contain the information about the dependencies and the files from where the browser should start rendering. Now then we will have the HTML file which will contain the HTML template which is used by the browser to render the elements on the web page. Then lastly we will have the JSX file. It will contain description of what all elements we want to display on our web page. So let's move on and see how the webpack.config.js file is created. So now this is how the webpack.config.js file looks like. In this, you provide the entry and output point from where the rendering should start. So here we are telling that we have script.jsx file in which we have the React code. And then this code will be transpiled by the Babel loader into this file, transpile.js. Uh, basically, in this file, we are just telling which file will be transpiled to which one and how it will be done. Okay, so next we have one HTML file. This is the basic HTML file in which we just need to add one div tag and one script tag. Inside the div tag, we will provide one ID so that later we can refer it from the JSX file. And then we have the script tag in which we will tell one transpiled file which will be created by the Babel. Next we have the JSX file. Now in this, you need to import React and React DOM from their respective directories and then create a component that is my component or you can name it anything you want which should extend react.component because in react everything is a component and then inside this we will create one render function in order to return the html representation in the end we will render my component over the uh, div tag which we use in the html file and we will get it through its id that is content so this is how all our file will look like on addition to all those files, what you need to do is you need to open this package JSON which will be created by your NPM. Now here when you open this you will find something as test that is echo error no test specified. Now you need to remove this whole of the thing and instead of this what you need to do is it a webpack dev server that is hot. So now you need to add this line because using this we will be running our code. So now we are done with our code. We have all our files. You can see these are the same code and then we will go back to our CMD and we will check whether this code is working or not. So for that we will say npm run it. As you can see it's successfully uh, working. So next thing I need to do is I'll go to the browser and I'll say localhost 8080 and here my code is working. So this is how we code by downloading the dependencies by the NPM. So let's go back to our PPD and let's see how to install by embedding the dependencies. Now, in order to do so, we need to follow two simple steps. First is download the zip file from the official site and then second one is to add them to your project folder. So, let's see how it's done. Okay, so now let's see from where we can download the zip file. So, let's go to the browser. Okay, here you can see I have this site that is https colon double slash react hyphen cn dot github dot io slash react slash downloads dot html now if you go to this site you can see that you have one download link over here now as soon as you click on this it will give you one zip file with all the dependencies inside it so i have uh, downloaded it let me go to my downloads uh, here i have this folder 
the zip file. Now when you open the zip file you can see we have one react folder inside it and inside that we have build and examples. So you just need this build folder over here. So just extract this. Once you are done the extraction you will get one build file like this and inside this you will have all the dependencies. Now what you need to do is just copy this and go to your project folder and paste it over there. Let me show you. Okay, so here I am inside my uh, project folder. Here I'll just paste it. Now, if you open this file, you can see that I have all my dependencies over here. So let's go to the PPD and see how the programs are created. So now for the program, you will need one HTML file and one JSX file. Okay, so now in this HTML file you have to explicitly add all the dependencies unlike the previous file which we created by the NPM in that everything was done implicitly by the NPM itself but here you need to create it and then add it explicitly. So here as you can see I have added my script file as well which says that my react code lies over script.jsx and similarly I am providing one div tag with one ID so that later on I can render my component with the help of this ID. So now let's see how the JSX file works. So here, so if you guys remember in the previous JSX file which we created using NPM, in that we created one class my component and here we are creating variable my component. So these are few minor differences uh, over here. So now if you see variable my component it has one uh, function which is called create class and inside that we have render function which will return the HTML representation for it. Now similarly as we have done over there sim uh, here also we'll call the react dom dot render in which we will mention our component to be rendered and the place where we have to render it. So let's see how it practically works. So uh, I'll go to my code. Okay, so now inside this project folder, I have already created my files as index.html and script.jsx. Inside this build folder, you can see all my dependencies are there. So here, you can see the code is same. Okay, so now what I'll do, I'll just uh, run it and show you guys this code is working or not. Okay, so for this, I'll go to the browser and I'll say localhost. Okay, as you can see, hello world. So this means our code is up and running. Okay, so we are done here with this file. So now I hope that you guys understand that how the files vary depending on the installation processes. So this will be all for today. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.